From a string in or from an integer into a string and then concatenating together a and b so this operator the plus operator we saw how we can use it for addition but we also it plays double duty and it's the uh, string concatenation operator but moreover javascript realizes that it can't add a a number in a string those are it's like adding you know, an apple and a car together. It's not like making an apple and an orange even. these It's not like fruit salad. It's like two disparately different things. What do I do? Well, I will, I will take the numeric value and coerce it, convince it, force it against its will to become a string, and then I will concatenate the two together. So that's the notion of coercion. And most people consider that to be an evil thing or a very dangerous thing um, and others just say well it's just what happens you know it's just part of the language now what if I really wanted to perform addition on two integers well then I would need to take steps to force the string six to become an, a number so that I could then add them together. And so to do that, there's actually a special function that will force that conversion. So let me uh, change this just a little bit. And um, we already have the value b, so I'll just reuse the value b and I'll set b equal to parse int. Now, I want you to notice something. I haven't really talked about Visual Studio Code much, but one of the nice things about Visual Studio Code is that it popped up this little box called IntelliSense. And IntelliSense is just a visual cue as I'm typing to show me things that I might need to reference or things that will help me to, to find the right command or the right idea. In this case, I knew it was something parse, so I start typing in and I can then use the arrow keys to start looking. I'm like, oh yeah, there's par parse float. That would give me a number with decimal values. But this, in this case, the, the string that I want to use, I know that it will only be a value without, uh, without any decimal points. So I want to use the parse int. Now what I can do is just use the space bar or like the opening parenthesis, whatever the next logical character is to do what's called code completion. So I don't have to type everything else. Now in this case, I know that I'm going to need to use the parenthesis for reasons I'll talk about later. So I'm just going to do an open parenthesis. Well, it didn't do it for me. Well, there we let's just go ahead and use the tab key instead. All right, so the tab key will give me what I want. Now I'm inside the the uh, parentheses and I need to pass in, first of all, the string that I want to change. So in this case, take the value of B and then I need to give it optionally what's called a radix or radix and that is essentially the base system. So if I wanted to um, to use like a hexadecimal, I might give it six, but in this case, I'm going to give it 10 because I want to uh, a base 10 or a decimal uh, conversion. All right. So that's a little technical, but typically if we use 10 in there, we're going to be just fine. So essentially what I want to do is take this six and based on the normal decimal system, I want to convert that into a numeric value. And then I want to continue on in lines four and five, like we had before. Let's see what we get this time. The answer is 13, just as we had hoped. All right. So the parse int is a built in function to JavaScript, and I can count on it being available in Node or in a web browser or any other implementation of JavaScript. All right, so um, I guess this begs the question, what if I try to do something kind of evil with this? So let D equal uh, parse int, and then I'll use the tab key to do the code completion. And this time I'm gonna pass in a character that will not convert to a or or even a string that will not convert into a numeric value especially one that's decimal so i'm going to save this well let's go ahead and console.log it and d and so let's go to that and then we'll do this all right and i get 
N-A-N, which represents not a number. It's not really an error, it's just telling us that the value we passed in is not a number. Um, we could actually do something along these lines as well. Um, let E equals is N-A-N. And then I can give it some numeric value. In this case, I'll give it D. And I'll do console.log E. So let's save that, run it again. And so this time, now I'm evaluating whether D is not a number. And that is true. It is not a number because I can see it here that's printed out, all right? So we saw two built-in functions, but there's a bunch of built-in functions for various things, uh, all kind of centered around, in this case, just working with coercion and checking the results of that attempt to, to coerce or, uh, or convert one data type into another, all right? Unfortunately, there's no parse Boolean, so you can't take a string of true or false and convert it into a Boolean. You'll have to take a few extra steps. There's a bunch of, of examples online for that. And so depending on the type of conversion that you're attempting to, to perform, um, it may not be easy to convert from one to the other. There's always a way, and usually you can find some code online, especially on a site like Stack Overflow that will help you figure that out. But that's all I wanted to say. Let's continue on in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks. In this video, I want to refocus on the JavaScript syntax specifically and uh, the various parts of speech inside of a properly formed uh, statement in JavaScript. So I started by explaining JavaScript by saying that you write statements, each of which are executed sequentially. Uh, and statements are complete thoughts, complete instructions to the JavaScript compiler of what we want it to do for us. And I said the statements are made up of one or more expressions and that an expression is made up of operators and operands. And I just made that statement in passing and kind of blew past it really quickly. Um, but I wanted to take a few moments and explain why that is an important statement whenever we're setting out to write code. And so we've already looked at uh, a couple of different operators. If we're thinking about the most atomic level of our JavaScript statements, we're thinking about in terms of operators and operands. So operators are things like keywords. We've already looked at the addition operator using the plus symbol. We looked at the string concatenation operator using the plus symbol. So that one is doing double duty uh, and, and it will be understood based on the context of how it's being used. And then there's the assignment operator, the equal sign that we've already looked at. And soon we're gonna look at a few other common ones just to start building out a list of operators that we can use to do more interesting things inside of our application. But there's also an operand. So operators are things like keywords and those various symbols that we've already looked at and we'll add more. Operands are something like identifiers, uh, a variable name. We'll, we'll learn about functions soon and functions are another type of operand. And so Unlike keywords and operators in JavaScript, which are fixed and part of the language, we, you and I, programmers, give operands their name. And so by combining operators and operands, we create expressions that are then used to compose statements. And so sometimes it's easy to spot an expression, and then sometimes it's not so easy. But identifying several major categories of expressions uh, we can better understand why JavaScript works sometimes and why it doesn't work sometimes. Uh, so for example, in the English language, we cannot write a sentence, a proper sentence like this, the dog, period. If we said, hey, uh, the dog, some our friend would say, what are you talking about? The dog did what? Which dog? You know, give me some more information, right? Why is that not a proper sentence in English? Because it didn't have enough inside of it to be considered uh, proper. We have a noun, we have the dog, but we don't have any verbs or adjectives or adverbs describing or, or um, you know, 
kind of giving us more detail about the dog. The same thing is true with JavaScript. So we can't, for example, and let me just create a quick file here. We'll call this expressions.js. So we cannot do something like this in our program right? Uh, because the JavaScript compiler will say, okay, what do you want me to do with that? Uh, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. I don't know what you want me to do with A. I don't see it. It's not one of my variables. You're not asking me to create a new variable. There's nothing inside of A. A means nothing to me, all right? So at a minimum, we're going to need to either, and these are the types of expressions at, at a very high level, we're going to either declare a variable. So we would do something like this once again, let A, all right, and even in this little tiny um, uh, two word line of code, there's already an operator and an operand. Here's the operator, the let keyword, and here's the operand, a name we want to give to a new variable that will cr be created in memory, all right? So that's one type of expression. We're gonna call this, um, types of expression here. We'll just use some comments types of expressions number one Variable declaration I think I spelled that right All right, so let's go ahead and smooth that up to the very top and say This is bad <laughs> uh, And then we'll do something like this I kind of like doing some ASCII art there whenever I create lists inside of my code. All right, so there we go. The other one is to assign a value. So the other type of expression, we can assign a value. So A equals three or four. Uh, and then another type of expression is to perform an evaluation that returns single value and so that might be something like and if we're talking purely about the expression itself it might be something like that b plus c so in a more interesting example uh, we might do something along these lines um, and i'll just comment this out because i want to reuse a there we go good all right so here we go line number 16 i'm going to go let um, B equals three, let C equal two, and then let A equal B plus C. Now I just want to focus on line number 19, and I want to say that there are three expressions in here. Can you find them? All right. Well, let's identify them. So number one, we're going to see that uh, let a, so that's a, a variable declaration. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to perform an evaluation of b plus c, right? And that will basically add those two values together because we're using the addition operator. And then finally, we'll do um, the result of b plus c is assigned to a. So three expressions all combined into a single statement, and there's a lot more going on than meets the eye, but that is the kind of thinking that will help you understand why your JavaScript code works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. You have to think in terms of writing uh, expressions that do things to form properly formed JavaScript statements. All right, so hopefully that little lesson in syntax is helpful. Let's talk about operators and the different types of operators. And, and again, we've used this collection of five or six operators so far. Let's, let's add to that collection. I'm going to go uh, create a new file called operators.js. And so um, there are several categories of operators. And I'll just kind of go through them really quickly here. So there's assignment like the equal sign. It's really the only one in this category, but it's a pretty important one and we've seen it used quite a bit. Uh, there's maybe some other keywords and things that can fall into this category, sort of, but the assignment operator is usually the only one in this category. Then there's uh, arithmetic, with which as you might uh, suppose, would allow you to do mathematical style operations. So that's the plus 
where we're adding two numbers together, subtraction, multiplication, that's the asterisk key over the eight on most keyboards. Um, there's also the division, all right? And uh, then there are some special ones like, um, let's call these, and I'll, they're kind of arithmetic, but I'm gonna call them uh, increment, decrement. So um, this is the plus plus and the minus minus. And used out of context, these don't seem so interesting, but what we could do is, for example, um, let's go var a equals one, a plus plus, and then console.log a, all right. Let's save that and then go over to our terminal and I'm gonna do uh, node operators. All right, and so you can see that we increment the value of a. So let's do this. Let's now increment it one more time and see, and let's save our work here. And then let's run it again and wait a second. The value is still two. How is that possible? Let's do this. Let's console log a like that. So now we're going to print the value out twice. We're going to print it out. I thought maybe we would get three, but we didn't. But if we print it out a second time, let's see what value we get. And so when we print it out the second time, we get three. And the reason is this because this operator, this increment operator, works after the line or after the value is already utilized inside of this line of code. So basically, hey, console.log, here's A, and after you print that to screen, then let's add something to it. That's why we're able to see the new value if I print it a second time, all right? What we may have preferred instead of this is to go console dot log and put the plus plus before the a that means i want you to first evaluate the increment of a and then print it to the console.log all right so let's save that let's rerun this and now we see three in both cases the same would be true with the decrement where we could subtract either before or after the evaluation of that variable all right just something to keep in mind all right so that's increment and decrement um, there's also, going back to arithmetic, there's the modulus. And this will give me uh, the, uh, the remainder amount. So let's go um, var m for modulus equals 10 divided by, whoops, 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 that's not what I wanted, 10 modulus 3. And then I want to console.log m. And just to kind of keep everything clean, I'm going to comment out all of this as well. Keep it around for posterity, but otherwise, that's all I want to see. What will I get back from this, this statement? And I get 1. What is 1? It's the remainder. So 10 divided by 3 equals 3 with 1 left over. That 1 is the modulus, all right? And actually, this becomes a lot more interesting and important when we're looping through lots of values and every like 10th or 20th or 100th item, I wanna print a little message to screen to say, hey, we finished processing the, the 10th, the 20th, the 30th, the 40th, the 50th item, all right? And I use that actually frequently, so I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of modulus. Let's comment that out. So uh, moving on to the different categories of operators, uh, let's talk about uh, the various string operators. And we've already seen these. So this is gonna be like the literal string operator. We're using single quotes. And then also we saw the string concatenation operator that will take two strings and, and allow them to be appended together to create one new string. Um, other operators, uh, precedence. So we might, uh, you know, order of operations, we actually use this quite a bit, um, even in non-mathematical situations. So for example, um, let's just do uh, var b equals uh, one plus two times three. Now, if you're coming from an algebra background, 
there's an order of operations where things should be done in a certain order. And I'm pretty sure, if memory serves me correctly, it's been a long time since I've had an algebra course, but you perform algebra before you perform addition. So if I were to do a console.log here, I would expect B to output two times three plus one, so that would be seven. Let's see if my, my memory serves me correctly here. And yes, it does. But what if that's not what I want? Well, I can use, just like in algebra, I can use parentheses to kind of control the order in which things are evaluated. Um, so in this case, I would do one plus two first and then multiply that by three, which will give me a completely different result of nine because three times three equals nine. Okay, so we'll use this, uh, the, um, the opening and closing parentheses for different purposes, uh, for example, um, whenever we want to do console.log, these parentheses are also used as the, um, the function invocation operators, all right? And that just says, here's a function name called log, and we'll learn about functions soon, but I want to actually invoke the function now and I can even use the function invocation operators, the opening and close parentheses, to pass in arguments. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But again, that is the open and close parentheses. Um, there are other operators, uh, and I'll just um, put them here. They may not make a lot of sense at the moment, but they will soon when we look at decision statements. So there's the logical if. I'm sorry, the logical and and the logical or, okay? So when I want to add two things together and evaluate two things together, either one of them needs to be true or both of them needs to be true. And we'll look at that in, in a little while. Um, there's also the member accessor operator. So when we did console.log, if you look at IntelliSense as I hit the dot on the keyboard, there's that period. Why are we using a period there? That allows me to access the various members of this object. And we'll talk about object, and we'll talk about uh, properties and functions or methods of objects soon. But that's what allows me to access the log function of the console object inside of Java JavaScript. So here again, comment that out. but. We'll use the period for that purpose. We're going to also look at the code block operator soon. And so, you know, I'm going through all these and I'm saying, hey, we'll look at these soon. Really, the point of this exercise is to say that there's lots of operators and we're going to have to begin to identify what all these special characters are. And the only way to do that is to, first of all, learn that they exist, what their function is, and then use them as we're writing programs. Uh, and so um, I think that's really the only thing I wanted to say. I mean, let me just put one more in here. The array element access operator goes by different names, but I'm just going to use that. And so we'll use square brackets for that purpose. So almost every single character, the special characters that are uh, above our numeric values and we can access using the shift key uh, and the various ones that are usually on the right hand side of the keyboard the various braces and brackets and colons and semicolons and and um, all of these are 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 used at, uh, to um, uh, for various purposes in JavaScript uh, and in most programming languages all right so I think that's all I really want to say uh, let's pick back up in the next video. You're doing great. Hang in there with me. We're getting through uh, some of the easy stuff and we're going to start moving on to some challenging stuff here really quick, but you're doing great. See you in the next video. Thanks. Up till now, each variable that we create can store one value at a time per variable. But what if we need to work with lists of data? In other words, I need to keep track of several people or several numbers 
and I need to store them in such a way that uh, it doesn't matter if I have two or 10 or 100, I can kind of keep them together and move them all around and use them in my application as a list, as a grouping of related values. In that case, I want to create an array. And so let's start by creating a new file called arrays.js. And first of all, it's basically, an array is basically a variable that can hold many different values. And so we can uh, declare a variable and initialize its value like so. Uh, so here we'll do let a equals. And here we're gonna use an opening and closing square brace or bracket. And then I'm gonna give it a series of values. Each value will be separated by a comma. For eight, um, let's just say 15, 16, 23, and uh, 42. All right, and so now I have an array of those values. Now these are just numeric values. What if I wanted to create an array of string values? I can do something similar. In fact, I can use any data type inside of here uh, that's allowable in JavaScript, and we'll see some examples of that a little bit later. But I might want David, Eddie, Alex, and uh, Michael. All right. And then what if I want to get one of the, the values? I can just do console.log. All right. Inside of here, I'm going to use the variable name. So in this case, I'll use A. And then I want to provide a index to retrieve one of the elements. So each of these is an element of the array. And I want to use an index, a numeric value that that allows me to get at one of those elements inside of the array. Uh, the indexes are zero base. That trips up beginners sometimes. Uh, you, for example, to get at the number four, the first element in the array, I would use the index zero. If I want the second item in the array, the second element of the array, I would need to use the index one and so on. So to get at it, I'm going to use A and then right next to the A square brackets and then I'm going to give it an index. So here we'll grab the first value and then I'll grab the second value. All right. And then I want to do show you how console.log will just print out all of the values for you nicely if you just want to give it the name of the uh, of the array itself, the, the variable itself. So let's save our work and um, we'll go uh, node arrays. All right, so you can see the first element of the array at index zero gives us the value four. The second element of the array at index one gives us the value eight. All right, hope you can see the correlation there. Or if I just wanna print out all the values in the array, I can just provide the variable name that contains the array and it will print them out all for me just like I have kind of here when I actually initialized our array variable. All right, let's comment this out. Now that is how we access individual elements. What if I wanted to change or set the value of one of the elements? The same would, would work. So in this case, I would say, for example, a zero and I would set it equal to seven like so. And so then we can just do console.log uh, like so, and then we run our application. Now you see the first element of the array has been changed from four to seven because that's how we can access a single element and assign it a new value. All right. All right. So um, what about these mysterious, uh, these mysterious arrays? What is their data type? So uh, let's do console dot log type of a and we can see that it's of type object and we'll talk about the object data type later because there's a lot more to it than just being able to create arrays but it's a little bit more advanced at this point we'll get into it soon just keep in mind that an array isn't a data type of itself it is a type of something called object, and we'll talk about objects later. All right. Um, so the other thing that's important to remember is that a array can in, can include elements of different data types. So let me just do uh, let C equals 
Um, we'll start it with four, and then we'll do Alex, <laughs> and then we'll do true. All right, so we've used three different data types right there, and we can just do uh, node arrays. Oh, I need to actually do a console.log C. There we go. There we go. All right, so you can see that a single uh, array can hold different data types. There's no restriction there. Let's comment that out. What happens if I try to access an element that with an with a index that does not exist? So let's do console 